Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani, and today's video is going to be inspired from my clinical cases during the week. That's where I draw a lot of my motivation to do my videos. One of the topics that's been a reoccurring sequence in the clinic is thyroid hormone making patients' adrenal dysfunction or adrenal fatigue worse. So let's dig in here a little bit. So a lot of patients come in, maybe they're already diagnosed with hypothyroidism, whether it's an elevated TSH seen by their conventional MD or endocrinologist, or maybe it's a subclinical hypothyroidism seen by maybe their functional medicine doctor where there's maybe a low T4 to T3 conversion, even though TSH, that pituitary brain hormone, is normal. So when we evaluate someone for thyroid or adrenal dysfunction, a lot of the symptoms are very similar. So check out my video on thyroid um, dysfunction versus adrenal fatigue. We go through this more in depth than we will in this video. But uh, typical symptoms we'll see with adrenal fatigue are gonna be fatigue, maybe anxiety, uh, inability to adapt to stress, um, maybe sleep issues, maybe cold temperature, cold hands, cold feet, maybe brain fog. With hypothyroidism, we may see elevated lipids, um, depression, mood issues, constipation, thinning hair on the outer third of the eyebrows, thinning hair on the head, cold hands, cold feet, um, cold in general, maybe weight gain. So you can see there's a lot of crossover in the symptoms and it's hard to fret that out. When we evaluate a lot of our patients, a lot of times in a, a good clean diurnal cortisol rhythm test, meaning we're testing the whole morning part all the way throughout the day so we can see how that cortisol rhythm fluctuates, one of the big thing we see in a lot of patients that are, have been sick for a while, they've been chronically ill for a while, they have very, very low cortisol. And cortisol is important because we need cortisol for healthy thyroid activation. It's important for thyroid hormone conversion. It's important for detoxification. Again, we need cortisol for lots of different things in our body. And if cortisol is too low, it's gonna be harder for us to adapt to stress. It's gonna be harder to deal with inflammation in the body. It's gonna be harder to build up our mucosal secretory IgA. That's our protective mucosal membrane barrier that lines our gut, urinary tract, vaginal canal, oral, um, mouth and such. That's our first barrier where the immune system interacts with infections or microbes. So let's, let's back up a little bit. So we have our adrenal gland right here, shaped like an A. We have the outer part here, which is the cortex part, and we have the inner part, which is the medulla. The medulla is typically where we see more of the adrenaline. To the middle, we see DHEA. And then in the outer part, we see more of our mineral corticoids and cortisol. So I like analogies because analogies just click. You never have to remember an analogy, it just clicks. So I've broken up the adrenals do three things. We have the carpenters, they help with rebuilding, right? Rebuilding, repairing. They have the firefighters. The firefighters help with putting out the fire, putting out the inflammation. And we also have the energizer bunny, if you will. Picture the old Duracell commercials from the 90s, right? It's giving you your energy. So we have firefighters putting out the inflammation. This could be inflammation in your gut, right? Digestive issues, infections, inflammation in your joints. It could be brain fog. Remember, brain fog is the number one sign for inflammation in your brain. The carpenters could be rebuilding. Again, chronic long-term um, stress, you're gonna have long-term issues. We're gonna need to be able to rebuild that. Part of that is DHEA, part which floods in, which flows into a lot of our anabolic hormones. These are hormones that help rebuild you. Not just reproduce babies, but also reproduce you, because every single one of your cells reproduces every single day, months on end. You're a new you every seven years, new bone every one year, new liver every two or three. So you can see your cells are turning over. So we want the healthy carpenter support with the anabolic sex hormones. We want the healthy firefighters, the inability to put out the fire of inflammation via cortisol and cortisone. And then the energizer, that's our cortisol and maybe even some of our adrenaline. We want that nice balance of cortisol to adrenaline. Too much adrenaline, because cortisol is dropping, we're gonna have that anxious, that, that tired but wired kind of feeling. You get the palpitations, you're anxious. If we have just enough cortisol there, especially when we sleep, we're gonna have really good energy, especially the right amount of cortisol at the right time. So our cortisol rhythm goes like this. I'll make it a little bit more gradual here. It's like a, a nice gentle ski slope, right? If you're skiing on a blue diamond, that's kind of your cortisol rhythm here. It's a nice gentle slope like so. So higher in the morning, 
lower in the midday, lower at the end of the day, and lowest at night. And you can see what happens here is this, is we have this cortisol to melatonin rhythm. As our cortisol drops here, what you're gonna start seeing is this, you're gonna start seeing melatonin actually going up like this. So we have this nice inverse, this nice X ratio in relationship for cortisol to melatonin. Cortisol is there to help with inflammation, help you with energy, help, and then also the rebuilding side with the DHEA, and then the melatonin portions to help you sleep and relax. And also it's a powerful antioxidant. So let's dig in here. A lot of patients that I see come in with chronically low cortisol. What does low cortisol mean? When we do our typical cortisol rhythm test, anything below 23. I've seen a handful of patients this week, less than 10. I think it's picomoles per liter is the correct measurement. But we see lower than 10, but lower than 23 is an issue. Lower than 10 is a deep concern. And on these patients, we have had a, a adrenal test, the cortisol rhythm, and we've had a hypothyroidism test, a TSH, a T4 free in total, and T3 free in total. And what we've seen on those tests, we compare the thyroid portion of the panel, we compare the, we compare the adrenal portion of the panel, and we see that the thyroid is very low. They're automatically thrown on thyroid support. And then we've seen the adrenal test incredibly low. And then over time, what we'll see is the adrenals continue to stay low, and if not get worse, while the thyroid starts to look a little bit better, yet we don't have a improvement in a lot of our thyroid symptoms we see that patently. So we really always want to make sure, unless we have an overt thyroid issue, we always want to start supporting the adrenals first. The adrenals first is the right way to go. If we have an overt thyroid issue like TSH above three in the functional realm, the conventional realm would be more above five or so, we would start treating both the thyroid and the adrenals together at the same time. Because you can see there's a massive connection. If you look at Addison's disease, this is the overt uh, autoimmune condition where you virtually have very little thyroid, excuse me, very little cortisol or adrenal hormone, primarily cortisol at, at all because of an autoimmune destruction of the gland. Well, it's actually contraindicated to give thyroid hormone while you have this Addison's low cortisol type of um, pattern going because it can create even more issues, partly because when you increase thyroid hormone, you increase metabolism. As you increase metabolism, that will also increase the metabolism of hormones, thus potentially driving your cortisol even lower. That's why they got to be careful with an Addison's disease, right? That's the, the one side of the equation, the pathological side. But well, what if we just have adrenal dysfunction that's more subclinical. It's not over, it's not an over pathology like Addison's. Well, it could still potentially drive issues. It could still make you feel not well and drive a lot of those symptoms. So we want to make sure if we have that thyroid issue present, we are supporting the adrenals first or at least at the same time. Okay. We know cortisol has a great deal of effect by driving excess body fat. The reason why is it can create internal blood sugar meaning if you have extra stress, your body's sitting there mobilizing sugar, primarily from protein, and if you're not eating and digesting enough of that protein, where's it coming from? It's coming from your lean tissue, your muscles, that mobilizes the amino acids, it runs this process known as gluconeogenesis, it takes glucose from the muscles, new glucose, shoots it out, and that can actually raise up your blood sugar. And again, higher blood sugar causes higher insulin, higher insulin will cause more body fat. Insulin drives sugar into fat cells, into the liver and into the fat cell. So again, increased body fat can easily be driven by cortisol because it affects blood sugar. And also chronic cortisol secretion can also affect the HPA axis. So the brain's always talking down to the adrenals. It's like the thermostat of your body. It's regulating stress. It's communicating back and forth. And when we have chronic stress, that thermostat just goes to sleep. It just says, whatever, there's too much stress. I'm not gonna be able to turn things off and on and have a regulatory effect. I'm gonna go to sleep. 
and that's kind of what your body does under chronic stress. So there's lots of things that we can do in the functional medicine realm to help the HPA axis because a lot of times when we talk about adrenal fatigue or adrenal dysfunction, we're really just talking about HPA axis rhythm that has been dysfunctional for so long that's really driven super low adrenal function. So it's not just the adrenal being tired right, like maybe a tired horse would be, so to speak, it's actually the adrenals potentially being tired, but also this whole HP brain dysfunction that's present. And we're trying to really jumpstart that, ideally with diet, with lifestyle, with sleep. These are all foundational pieces. And then building off it with specific lab testing, thyroid, adrenal, and or gut, and then specific programs that really jumpstart and support what the body is missing and also giving supports, especially adaptogenic herbs to help jumpstart that HP, that hypothalamic pituitary signaling to the adrenal glands. So cortisol is not a bad thing. Cortisol is a really powerful hormone. It helps with detoxification. It helps with energy. It helps with the body regulating stress and inflammation. You can use the tummy as a cortisol meter. Your best test for cortisol function is gonna be an adrenal cortisol rhythm. A salivary one's gonna be the best, so it measures free fraction cortisol hormone. And then also, um, looking at temperature can be really important as well. A lot of people that have cortisol and thyroid issues have low body temperature and or erratic body temperature. So that's a good sign. If your body temperature goes more than 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit from one day to the next and stays below 97.8 chronically, that's a good sign you have a thyroid and an adrenal issue. And if you're trying to think about, you know, what's the next step here, Again, looking at the thyroid and looking at the adrenals is the, the next logical step, right? But we also not want to ignore the diet and lifestyle piece. And the big mistake almost all doctors make, even good functional medicine doctors, is the gut piece. So many people ignore the gut because the gut, if there's infections, if there's inflammation, if there's malabsorption, if there's imbalance in gut bacteria or pathogens that can throw off the immune system, increase leaky gut or gastrointestinal permeability, and create more inflammation and more problems down the road. So if you have an adrenal or thyroid issue, you don't wanna forget the gut piece because that's typically the linchpin in most people's programs that tend to be missed. So again, this is Dr. J here signing off. Any questions on the thyroid adrenal connection? I've done a lot of videos on this topic. Get your cortisol looked at, and if you're having a hard time getting that done, click on screen and reach out and take the next step to get your thyroid and your adrenals functioning optimally. Again, this is Dr. J here signing off. Have a great night.